in sunny California at West Tech, one of the SME manufacturing series events. Very, very excited today. We are here with Lawrence from Zeiss. Lawrence, thank you very much for having us. That's me, Jan. Uh, Ian. Now, what are we looking at here today? I saw this, it caught my eye. I am very, very interested to hear what it's doing. Yeah. So first off, a little bit about the hardware. What are we looking at? It's a Contura. Contura is the name of the machine? Yep, it's the brand of the, the our, our uh, product level of it. And at the end of the day, it's our workhorse CMM. Right. Right. We often refer to it as a traditional CMM because it's a tactile or, or touching. As you see it go through, it's gonna be scanning and or picking up points. So this little probe there, that's considered a tactile probe? Yes, sir. Right, yep. now, what is the advantage using a tactile probe? First off, it's, it's very, very established in the industry. A lot of aerospace precision machine, you know, gets measured with traditional CMM. Second of all, it's really the uncertainty. You start trying to look at something with a camera or you know structured light, you really don't know a part like you touch it to really understand that form and how you machined it. Right, now this is not your average CMM though. I see this thing can actually move around. Yeah, and this is perfect for you know a job shop, maybe somebody that has a higher variety of part numbers, not limited to, but one of the nice things about this is you can see that this probe actually articulates. Right. So I know we've all measured or had to make you know, parts with these compound angled holes. You know, generally with the traditional CMM, you're gonna have to each position, go through that warning. One of the nice things, this articulating probe gives you that full range, which I think is a little thousand positions. Your, your machine, your operators has the flexibility to essentially unlock that head position and keep moving through your day. So wasting less time and actually proving it out, more time measuring. Correct, yep. Now with a machine this size, what kind of shops are putting these on the floor? You know what, that's one of the nice things with our contour. They all come in different sizes. Oh, so this one off, bigger or smaller? You want one as big as this, you know, our show you know, space, it comes that way. So it really just depends. You know, one thing I will say about size with a machine, when you're looking at CMM, I've never heard anybody complain about buying too small of a CMM. Right. Right. So even with the excess space, as you see, this articulates. We need room for that. You have big, large parts. In addition, palletizing and oh, loading. So you can palletize into this. Yes, sir. Now, what would you what would you use to load and unload those pallets? Is that a Zeiss product as well, or can you third party? Or? You know what? We our Calypso software is our flagship software. It integrates well with robots, machining centers. We've taught it to communicate. And we can, we can do it for you. It depends on how far you want to take it. So we have a whole integration team you know, with uh, loading carts and pallets where a robot's doing it, as simple as to a light curtain with a robot. Right, and when we're looking at the tools, this thing can actually tool change as well. So not only can this thing reload parts, it can change. Yeah. So yeah, if we're looking a little bit at the hardware, you'll see in the back, these are just some down probes. In a traditional manufacturing environment, you maybe have a star or maybe a couple different sizes, and you would probably see that whole back loaded up with various different styles. Right. Like. Um, but yeah, that's one of the beauties, right? And when we're doing metrology, we're trying to manage uncertainty, right? Right. So there's some rules, and we want to use the correct stylized for that application. So it will go seamlessly through the program and change. It will articulate as well. Now this one over here, that is not a probe. What am I looking at back there that says dot scan? Yeah, so it's one of our newest sensors. It's gonna be a non-contact sensor. And where a big application is, is a, we can collect a lot of points quickly with a non-contact solution. Um, so for example, if you have really, really high-end surface finish. Right. Right, if I touch and drag this style eye, picking up tens of thousands of points. You're gonna be carving that thing up. Exactly. So there's various applications leaning down into chamfers, complicated contours, but the nice thing is, is how we leverage it, which makes it a little different when we put it on a CMN. You'll see, we'll talk about it a little bit later. We also have it on a vision system. And oh, cool. It's kind of been an industry standard. But now we have the ability to pick it up in the program as well and articulate through and gain access to features be, be, being that it's on a traditional CMM rather right. than the vision system. Now, once this thing is done measuring, it spits out to, I think you called it Calypso? Yes, sir. Is that what we're talking about over here? Let's just take a quick look at that so people can see kind of what this, uh, what this shoots out. Yeah. So what you see here is our Calypso software. It's a program in progress. We could obviously tell that. We got this nice green light running. Um, and as it's going through, you can see these are everything we've asked it to go do. Um, 
standard blade inspection. You see some reporting pop up here, here and there as well. Now, for someone who is used to programming CNC machines, how difficult is that? Is is it to transition from programming like a three-axis mill to programming a CMM with this kind of software? Is it is there a big learning curve, or is the onboarding pretty seamless? You know what? It's it's very icon based. I'll just pause it real quick here. In the sense of an operator, if you want to measure a circle, we go here, feature, measure a circle. Right. right. Does so what it says on the tin. One of the big things that's changed in CMMs is we've always thought to have somebody really, you know, I could say time the dragon. Right. Right. You need a dedicated CMM program. You know? But obviously I kinda like think the windows switch over. Icon right. based, feature based. So it's very, very easy to adopt, especially for the machinist background. Right. When I used to be the applications engineers teaching these classes, machinists made my favorite students because we're doing the same thing. Instead of removing material, we're just going and measuring it. Right. right. We're just not move, removing material. And understanding coordinate systems and spatial relations is what you guys do. Exactly. So it's very intuitive to make that transition. It's not trying to learn a new language in that respect. Correct. And now, for someone who's trying to get into this, do you guys offer some kind of training for this? If someone puts one of these on the floor, is there an onboarding process? Yeah, so we have various centers. We have, we're up to 10 centers nationwide, so hopefully there's one in almost every big market. Right. Um, and it comes with the machine. It's part of the tr training package. Um, and yeah, we bring you in. We put the students on the machine. You, oh, on, like right on it. Yep, in our classroom. We have a classroom in Lake Forest, the closest one here. But it's all the same throughout the site. So we'll have generally about eight students on their machine going through a, a, our course curriculum. It's about a 40-hour course curriculum. Oh, wow. You leave with the book, so you have some reference materials. In addition, we know you, you, you're going to go back and start using the machine, right? And you didn't make our training part. So in addition to that, Zeiss, we also have over 100 applications engineers that oh, are wow. more or less dedicated to our call center. So at any point, you can call them and say, I don't know how to turn the CMM on. Or, hey, I, you know, there was a calculation I was uncertain about. I'm getting weird take a look at it. Right. Yeah. And we often send engineers out. That's what my group does is a lot of on sites, you know, right. to, to help get over that learning curve. Because you say you do how many service calls a year right now? We do also a, a services projects, right? right. So a lot of times, you know, you know, everybody wants a Zeiss or, you know, maybe not have the budget or a size. So we also do a lot of projects. Just right. myself, I'm responsible for about 2,000 customer projects a year. That's crazy. That's that are a flowing, lot. Yeah, that flow in and out of our lab. So we see a lot of parts. Now, not only with this kind of metrology with the CMM, I did see there was some kind of electro, not electron microscope, but digital microscope. Oh, yeah. Why don't we go take a peek at that while we got a chance here? And I believe walking through this, through, walking us through this is going to be Jose. Jose, thank Pleasure. you very How much you for having doing? us. Jose Montalongo, and uh, this is the Zeiss uh, Digital Smart Zoom 5. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a quick sample of how we do this process. Yeah, I'd so, love to. So typically this is a, uh, a non-visual uh, optical microscope. Now you have a digital microscope. And we, we're going to just inspect a bolt thread. Yeah, so absolutely. to the typical eye, it looks like it's good. So I'm going to show you that you can see the defects at high magnifications with the digital microscope. Sure. So let me show you how I do this. Now this is quite the uh, complicated <laughs> setup here. No, it's very easy, very, very simple. Easy. Okay, so we have a camera built in. We have a zoom here. Uh, then what I'm going to do is uh, just go to my live image. So, this so that's is, live right now. If you so stuck is, your finger under there, it so would So this be live. is my live image here. All right, so and I can move. So I'm focusing, uh, moving the stage, and and if you see the sample is not focused, it's not focused here or here. Right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get capture an image. So let me show you what I done. So this is a captured image. It's not focused. Then this is a image that's completely focused. Right. Okay. And then this is the image in a 3D profile. So that thing will create a 3D profile yes, from that microscope. From that microscope. Wow. And if you see, now we can see the defects. Where we, if we're looking at it here to the end, we don't see these defects. No, not at all. But I mean, that's so, going to cause yeah. failure. So that's it. So that's Easily. the uh, how I did it. And so this is the key feature of the microscope. It's a uh, 3D profile, so you can do visual inspections. You can see the defects on all materials. So I have a weld, welding plate. I have electronics. We do uh, industrial manufacturing. Uh, medical device defects uh, in electronics. So it's, it's a system that 
they can bring from the machine shop real quick, look at it, take measurements, and do a visual inspection. The medical device, I feel like, would be very, very interested in this because when you're implanting these medical devices in people's bodies, if there's any kind of chips out of that or anything, that's going to cause irritation. Oh, yeah. It's so going to it, cause big problems. You're going to see uh, debris, any kind of fibers that are, are left after the cleaning process. So what right. they'll do is they'll clean it, they'll bring it here and see if it, if it actually cleaned or how much particles are still left. Is that typically an inspection used for this? Yes. For identifying, no, I guess identifying yeah, defects so is exactly it's what it definitely, says. So you go from a machine <laughs> shop to hear it and to visualize the inspection. Absolutely, thank you very much for showing right, us, Jose. Pleasure. I appreciate that. Thank you that. very much. Now, thank Lawrence you. is gonna show us one more CMM. Two more CMMs. There's yeah, I want to this stop. big thing here, which I've been looking at from afar and trying to figure out. I thought it was a beer fridge at one point, but it's not. What are we looking at here? Yeah, so this is, you know, in my belief and Zeiss's belief, the future of metrology and how we'll do things. Um, we're looking at just kind of a stand and it's a scale size of what you would bring in house. And you can see this animation playing. It's actually a CT scanner. A CT scanner? Yeah. Like just like you put a human body in and it takes little pictures of every slice of it, right? Yep, very similar. And we do a couple things a little different at Zeiss, right? So when you're imaging soft tissues, I don't know if you've ever seen on YouTube the shrouds off of a CT scanner, a human one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just take a look at it, spin it fast, it'll make you feel very uncomfortable next time you're in one. Thousands and thousands of RPMs. Great for imaging sm soft tissues and body, right. but very bad for metrology, because again, we're managing uncertainty, movement, speeds. So what you're seeing is, this is would be what's our average CT scanner. We have an x-ray source. This is, would be where your part is and the detector. Right. Okay. And you know we often refer to these as CT scanners, but at the end of the day, we've been talking traditional CMMs. This is no different, because it is also volumetrically calibrated. So it is a CT CMM. And it would be contactless, obviously, as well. Yeah, which for, would make it handy. Yeah, and for here's an example. You make this part. It can be any assembly. This is just your run-of-the-mill aerosol can. Right. It's put together. It does not work. What is our methodology that we use up until this point? Cut it in half. Destructive testing. And during destructive NDT, we add heat, we remove material, etc. Right. Very difficult to tell where the actual flaw was. Yeah, and then to start troubleshooting and chasing down issues. You know, if you section slightly different, right? So right. now imagine we get a CT this part, non-destructively, keep your sample intact for any testing downstream, go in here and interrogate this in the 3D and see what's not interacting with what. And especially if I'm doing something like a prototype or uh, you know, a one-off part that's super expensive, I have 40, 50 hours into this part, there's a defect with it. If I can not destroy it and see if there's a way to save it, as opposed to using destructive testing, that's gonna be super helpful. Yeah, imagine the aerospace world pumps, you know, big time. impellers, big complicated assemblies that are expensive. Or if we start looking at some space programs, these yeah. are flight critical parts that are gonna maybe, let's say, go to Mars or go to Venus. So it's very important to know. And we'll do them even when there's not a problem. That's right. Just as part of the QA, I was just thinking, you know, it, not necessarily if there's a flaw in it, but especially I did see when it comes to um, 3D printed parts, these could be really good for identifying voids oh, yeah. inside the 3D printed part to make sure that actually that matrix formed properly. Yeah, and that's, and that's a big concern, right? Additive manufacturers also changing the manufacturing world. And I know one of the big things there that I'm always asked of, we're always worried about porosity. Right. Right, and again, so imagine now you could 3D print this part and tell you what the porosity is, what's the yep. total area, what's the total voids. And the nice thing is, is you're building a history. I give you a CT data set. You virtualize this part for life. You can archive it, you know, so the, the Zeiss Metrotome CT scanners is, is really the This feature. is really the next step in CMM and metrology technology. Speaking of CMMs and metrology, I do think you have one other CMM we want to take a peek at. Yep. Let's go take a peek at this one over here. Looks like it's being used right now, but we yeah, can just I know shout these guys are here. just finishing up. Maybe we can squeak in over here. Yeah, we'll squeak in over here. This is the, which, which machine is this? The O Inspect. Yep. Yeah, and you know, to kind of piggyback on some of the things that we talked earlier about the Contour. I went off the bat, said traditional CMM. Right. All CMM is, is a coordinate measurement machine. So anything right. that's calibrated is a CMM essentially. But in the world, we often call these vision systems. Vision right? systems, okay. Or multi-sensor CMM, okay? And what you'll see, very similar to that, is sticking down, there's another probe, the same hardware as, the same hardware as, the same probing hardware as the right. CMM we were just, just discussing. We lose articulation, right? We don't have as big this of a This is all space, straight down, right? right? Yeah. 
in, these do come in bigger sizes as well, but you're always going to be straight down when you're thinking that multi-sensor vision system. Um, and then in addition, there's a camera straight down, and we also have a laser, just oh, wow. like the one we were discussing the over dot. there. The dot scan, yes, dot, sir. That's the one. And so, so why go multi-sensor? Right. You know? What's the what's the benefit to that? Yeah. Well, I mean, you could imagine if you can take a look at these parts. You know, something as small, you may not be able to stick a tactile or touch probe in there. Right, something like that, you know, that's 50 thou, 20 thou, 30 thou. Right. There's no probe you can get in there, period. Right. What about a non-rigid part? The silicones, the rubbers, you know, you'll, you'll move them by touching them, right? I didn't even think so, of that. Yeah, so, you know, cameras. And on top of that, high speed, right? right? If you're making 10,000 of these, you know, a day, you can just throw them up there, the camera buzzes around and goes and gets that. And especially with something like that, if I have a tight tolerance, I may need to do every single one for my QA process, this Correct. would make quick work of it. Correct. Yeah, that's another thing too, you know, as, as the quality demands get pushed down on manufacturing and the, the, the quality people that are making the equipment, you're starting to see more and more demands being pushed down for higher level reporting. Right. You know. You and I know we could almost achieve anything with a caliper and a height gauge and a micrometer. If you give us enough time. Right. But, you know, now they're actually, we're actually getting to the point where that philosophy starts breaking down. It does. When we start having mobility and complicated GD and In Internal features, all that kind of stuff. You really do need something a little more standardized. What kind of shops are putting these in right now? What, what markets are you seeing these, this machine specifically going into? Yeah, you know, it, it really does a lot in the medical, medical. but not limited to. Right, you know, we're aerospace, you know, a lot bigger parts, you know, you're right. in that traditional CMM. But as you can imagine, med device, you know, generally something that can fit in your hand. Typically. You know, <laughs> yeah. And, you know, a lot of needles, you know, types right. of medical device products. Well, that's excellent. Thank you very much for showing us around today, Lawrence. Yeah. Much appreciated. Now, where can we find Zeiss online? Zeiss.com. And where's your booth here in case people want to see you at West Tech? That is a good question.